So the standard model of physics is, is, is one of the models that's very accurate for describing three, three of the fundamental forces of physics. And it's looking at the, the world of the very small. Right. And then there's back to the neighbor of uh, gravity, of general relativity. So, and in the context of a theory of everything, what's traditionally the task of the unification of these theories? And well, why is I mean, it hard? The, the issue is you try to use the methods of quantum field theory to talk about gravity and it doesn't work. Just like there are photons of light, so there are gravitons, which are sort of the particles of gravity. And when you try and compute sort of the properties of the, of the particles of gravity, the kind of mathematical tricks that get used um, in working things out in quantum field theory don't work. And um, that's, um, so that's been a sort of fundamental issue. And when you think about black holes, which are a place where uh, sort of the, the, the structure of space is, um, uh, you know, has, has sort of rapid variation and you get kind of quantum effects mixed in with effects from general relativity, things get very complicated and there are apparent paradoxes and things like that. And people have, you know, there have been a bunch of mathematical developments in, in physics over the last, I don't know, 30 years or so, which have kind of picked away at those kinds of issues and got hints about how things might work. Um, and, but it hasn't been, uh, you know, and the, the other thing to realize is, as far as physics is concerned, it's just like, here's general relativity, here's quantum field theory, you know, be happy. Yeah, so do you think there's a quantization of gravity, so quantum gravity? What do you think of efforts that people have tried to, yeah, what do you think in general of the efforts of the physics community to try to unify these laws? So I think what's, it's interesting. I mean, I would have said something very different before what's happened with our physics project. Um, I mean, you know, the remarkable thing is what we've been able to do is to make from this very simple, structurally simple underlying set of ideas, we've been able to build this, this you know, very elaborate structure that's both very abstract and very sort of mathematically rich. And the big surprise, as far as I'm concerned, is that it touches many of the ideas that people have had. So in other words, things mm -hmm. like string theory and so on, uh, twister theory, it's like, the, you know, we might have thought, I had thought, we're out on a prong. We're building something that's computational. Right. It's completely different from what other people have done. But actually, it seems like what we've done is to provide essentially the machine code that, you know, these things are, are various features of domain-specific languages, so to speak, that talk about various aspects of this machine code. And I think there's a, this is something that to me is, is, is very exciting because it allows one both for us to provide sort of a new foundation for what's been thought about there and for the, all the work that's been done in those areas to, you know, to give us, you know, more more momentum to be able to figure out what's going on. Now, you know, people have sort of hoped, oh, we're just gonna be able to get, you know, string theory to just answer everything. That hasn't worked out. And I think we now kind of can see a little bit about just sort of how far away certain kinds of things are from being able to explain things. Some things, one of the big surprises to me, actually, I literally just got a message about one aspect of this is um, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, it's turning out to be easier. I mean, this project has been so much easier than I could ever imagine it would be. That is, I thought we would be, you know, just about able to understand the first 10 to the minus 100 seconds of the universe. And, um, you know, it would be 100 years before we get much further than that. It's just turned out it actually wasn't that hard. I mean, we're not finished, but, you know. So you're, you're, you're seeing echoes of all the disparate theories of physics in this framework. Yes. Of Yes. I mean, it's a very interesting, you know, sort of history of science-like phenomenon. I mean, the best analogy that I can see is what happened with the early, early days of, of computability and computation theory. You know, Turing machines were invented in 1936. People sort of understand computation in terms of Turing machines, but actually there had been pre-existing theories of computation, combinators, general recursive functions, lambda calculus, things like this. But people hadn't those hadn't been concrete enough mm -hmm. that people could really wrap their arms around them and understand what was going on. And I think what we're going to see in this case is that a bunch of these mathematical theories, um, including some very, I mean, one of the things that's really interesting is one of the most abstract things that's come out of, of sort of uh, mathematics, the higher category theory, things about infinity groupoids, things like this, which mm. to me always just seemed like they were floating off into the stratosphere, ionosphere of mathematics. 
um, turn out to be things which our sort of theory anchors down to something fairly definite and says are super relevant to the way that we can understand how physics works. 